Here to discuss Crosby's influence are the former London Mayor Ken Livingstone and the Conservative activist and Times columnist Tim Montgomery. Tim, if I could start with you, there you have it. Allegra says that the Chancellor was overruled by Linton Crosby and as a result of polling, uh, mm. Michael Gove was demoted. That's no way to run a government, is it? Well, I think it's probably true. Um, but the reason why David Cameron is listening to Linton Crosby is because partly you have the reason there in Ken Livingstone. Ken Livingstone was the... Uh, Tories couldn't defeat Tony Blair. Uh, Ken Livingstone did. He was uh, won whopping majorities in London. But it was Linton Crosby's strategy, with a little help from a man called Boris Johnson, that unseated Ken. In Australia, Linton Crosby helped John Howard to four victories. And it's, it's that campaigning now, it's that ability to run a campaign, organise it properly, to understand opinion polls, to understand the public. That's why the Conservatives are willing to, there, to hire him and to listen to but him. But there's a paradox here, isn't there, which is that all the evidence shows that one of the reasons politicians are so unpopular is people think they don't show leadership, that it's all about spin and polling. Mm. I mean, isn't it just part of the whole eating away at confidence in politicians that are actually powerless and they're just run essentially by the ad men? Well, look, we say we like conviction politicians, but when politicians do things that we don't like them to do, we don't necessarily respect them. But opinion polls are our way, in a way, of voting between elections, telling politicians what we think about issues. Sometimes it's wise for politicians to listen to that. Sometimes it's wise when Ken Livingstone ignored certain people's views on congestion charge and plough ahead. But opinion polls do matter in between elections, and Linton Crosby is a very good interpreter of them. I mean, Ken, you don't like Linton Crosby. I think you <laughs> think of him as a sort of <laughs> evil person, as I understand it. But isn't that just because he got you defeated? Well, no, no. He, he, he was incredibly well, successful. Yeah, he's, in, he's most probably the most successful propagandist since Dr Joseph Goebbels. <laughs> The joke. Oh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really suggesting for one minute they're in the same league. But they've got one thing in common. It's about fear, and that's what's so demeaning about what Crosby's done to our policy. When I came into politics, elections were debates about issues. Now it's smear, fear, and what we should have in the next nine months is an endless debate about how you're going to turn our economy around, where our economy is going in the future. Crosby's going to do everything possible to stop that. It'll be a focus on immigration, benefit cheats, strong trade unions. It's not true, Ken. All if you look that. at the long-term economic plan that every Tory spokesperson has to use day in, day out, that's very much Linton Crosby's argument. He's actually arguing he's not for honest. the Conservatives to focus on the economic issues, but he's not, but not, not just good, immigration he's not and welfare. honest about that. That's our problem. No, the simple reality is now we've had 30 years of neoliberal economics under Thatcher and continued by Tony Blair. It hasn't worked. We are worse but off the issue than here we is, were. But surely the issue here is, 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 a, is a different one. I mean, we recently had the leader of the Labour Party, mm. Ed Miliband, saying mm. that he's going to back away from image building mm. and spin. But let's be clear, they've just you know, hired uh, David mm. Axelrod from America. The mm. Lib Dems have their own South African... Yeah, I mean, if the game's but, up, isn't it? The, I mean, government is now run by spin and pollsters. I mean, I think that was... One of the weaknesses of New Labour, they forgot the actual core issues about what you pandered to. But do you have you any confidence that Ed Miliband is going to be different? Because when I'm, whenever I've with, been with Ed Miliband, he's talking about issues. He's, what do we learn from the success of the German economy? He's never obsessed by this sort of spin nonsense. And the key thing, you look at the people he's appointed, they're people who organise and mobilise activists, not what you pandered what about to in terms David of David Axelrod, he's appointed... Which is just, just pointed, exactly. yeah, ...an American yeah, campaign advisor the, at a lot of money but the key, that's paid for by Labour activists. The, key the idea that Ed Miliband Clinton, is very different is the nonsense. The key thing about Clinton's, we built a machine, and that's what I tried to do. I couldn't defeat um, Boris, but we built a machine that actually mobilised a lot of people across London, got them out on party, not quite enough to win. But in a situation where Ed Miliband faces what I face, a completely hostile media... That's the core. Build that machine, reach people on the doorstep. Well, I think this debate is going to run all the way to next <laughs> May, and it'll be jolly interesting to see what it does to the overall turnout. And I'm not sure people are terribly enthused by the turnout of yeah. these. And we'll win. But let's just remember, the real <laughs> we'll smear we'll tonight see. was I, yours I, with I've Joseph Goebbels, not by Linton Crosby. Now.